Hello, my name is Brandon Toombs and I'm an employee central consultant and today I'm going to start a series of videos on Success Factors Integration Center. Um, today we're going to be going through an introduction. Um, over the, the course of these videos we're going to first do a, uh, an introduction, kind of talk about what the Integration Center is and why you would use it. Uh, next we'll be talking about how you get started. Third will be scheduling and then last we are going to go into a deeper dive on some uh, advanced topics. So uh, what is Integration Center? Why does Integration Center exist? Uh, Integration Center um, exists as kind of a middle ground. Um, so it allows, uh, it, uh, it's really intended to allow functional consultants, so people without a, a deep technical background, to do some of the basics of integration uh, writing, so interfaces. So uh, on, on one end, you have reporting tools that, that already exist and people can run reports and then send those out to uh, providers or, or reformat them and send them to providers. And then on the, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, of course, is the middle, middleware tools. And of course, the, uh, you know, the official tool that most uh, customers or, or that is provided by SuccessFactors is uh, uh, CPI. And CPI is, is an excellent choice and it definitely uh, has uh, some things that it can do that Integration Center cannot do and we'll get into some of those in here in a moment. Um, but it is, uh, of course, a more technical tool. You've got to go through a lot more training in order to utilize that. Uh, so that's why Integration Center came into existence. So it's, it's really meant kind of as a, as a nice, intuitive way to allow uh, customers to do some of the basics themselves without having to turn over to the technical team. Um, okay, so when to use which tool? Um, so I pulled a lot of this from a blog that exists, and you can see down at the bottom uh, the, the details on that blog, uh, but I've, I've beefed it up a little bit on some of the things that, that I found most useful. So um, the question is, uh, when do I need to do a CPI interface versus when do I do an integration center uh, interface? So um, uh, we're just gonna walk down through this list, and then I may provide some additional commentary at the end. So um, the, the criteria intended resource so who does what um, if if with integration center it's really meant to be more someone with a functional knowledge of employee central so that would be someone who uh, works with it day in and day out do, does the configuration and manage business configuration things like that so it would be more of a you know just your basic uh, configurer uh, CPI of course is someone that's trained on CPI that really understands the ins and outs and, and knows how to do some of the scripting and mapping and, and things like that. It's a, it's a very powerful tool but there's a lot of learning curve in order to get there. Um, API. So what does Integration Center offer? Uh, Integration Center um, really utilizes uh, OData which is more, more or less the standard within SuccessFactors. It is used uh, uh, throughout uh, SuccessFactors. There's, there's OData interfaces. Uh, so that is, uh, that, that's good. But in addition to that, on the CPI front, in addition to OData, there is a older uh, tool called SFAPI and particularly something called Compound Employee. And this is what most of the replications are built off of. So they don't use OData for, for some of the replications that go from uh, success factors over to SAP. They use the Compound Employee, which is a really nice tool because it kind of structures all of the data for an employee and sends it across. And so that's a useful tool, but it's only available to CPI. So that's where Integration Center is more really focused in, not on sending in the entirety of an employee's data across. Although, as you can, as, as you'll see, future videos we can do that um, but also the SF API does have the ability to really do some structured um, uh, 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 export of the data um, next up uh, as far as like the uh, where there are differences uh, so for field mapping options there are uh, lots of different uh, that we're going to go through uh, mapping fixed values some uh, simple calculations but on the CPI side there is just full programming capability um, and so if, as you're going through this process, um, one of the things you're going, that you're going to see is that if, if, if either Integration Center can do it with the, with the tools that are available to it or it can't. There is no middle ground. There's no way that I can just say, well, I can do some scripting and, and, uh, and meet that requirement of that interface. Uh, whereas on the CPI side, you definitely can do that. And of course, that is the big difference is uh, you can get a long way in uh, and find out that you have to switch over to CPI because Integration Center doesn't meet your requirements. So it's very important that you understand upfront um, what kind of requirements that you have. Are there any uh, unique requirements that are going to require something that Integration Center can't do? Uh, so 
for most customers, what I would suggest is really start uh, on using Integration Center for things that are just really straightforward, uh, flat file uh, exports. And so that's really where you would use uh, Integration Center. And then as you get more advanced, you, um, you will get a better sense of what the limitations are of the tool. Uh, security. Um, on the success factors uh, integration center side, you've got certificate, PGP, OAuth. There's uh, more expansive uh, uh, processes available in CPI. They get down to message level uh, type of security where so the security at the integration center is going to be more at the, at the higher level. Um, scheduling, uh, no real differences there. Uh, sender and receiver, uh, there are different kinds of, uh, re uh, of options available um, for integration center, but of course there's going to be a larger number on the CPI front. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything specifically um, that is, a, that is a, a limitation on the integration center, and I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but uh, definitely you could run into some limitations there. I just don't know them off the top of my head. Uh, reusability, um, they're, they're both very re reusable, as we'll talk about in a second. There's catalogs that we can download for that they're going to have some, some starter uh, kits for you for your integrations, both in Integration Center and CPI. Uh, inbound, um, so the one difference is um, with, integra with Integration Center, uh, there are more limitations uh, with, with how that the data can be imported um, than in CPI. Um, in, in, um, right here I have SFTP for, uh, with flat file sources, the main reason or, or the main method of Integration Center uh, imports. And then monitoring, uh, so this is another key area. So uh, Integration Center, we'll talk about to monitoring um, a little bit later in the scheduling uh, uh, video, but basic monitoring scheduling works fine. It's, it's very good um, for, for those types of things. But as far as CPI, what you're going to get is you're going to get uh, you know, a lot more detailed tools and notifications. And, and then of course, it's going to be a, in a better uh, position if you need to reprocess things later on, um, where Integration Center is just gonna tell you things that have, have failed, but it's not going to uh, 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 queue them up so that you could uh, reschedule and, and send them later. So those are some of the key uh, differences between the two tools. Again, uh, to, to reiterate, uh, Integration Center is, is good and you can definitely use it and should use it in cases where it, it meets your requirements, but you wanna understand your requirements up front and make sure they're not too exotic, in which case you may be uh, running into a situation where you're gonna need to move, need to move over to CPI. Um, as far as how, uh, you know, what's available in CPI, um, or integration center, excuse me, is you're going to have a warehouse of pre-built integrations. So there, there are some things that have already been built that you're gonna be able to download and use them as starter kits for, for your integrations. And I, I have not found uh, any that you can just uh, use out of the box, but they are a good starting point. So that's a, that's a great uh, tool that you have available to you. Uh, here's, a, here's a list of some of the pre-built integrations uh, on Integration Center. Um, and I'm not gonna read through all these, but these will give you a kind of a flavoring of some of the things that you can do through Integration Center um, as, as far as starting points go. So these are, these are some of the, some, some key examples for you. Um, and then of course, the key part of uh, Integration Center to me is the, the wizard you can use in order to build the integrations themselves. We'll be spending a lot of time on that. Uh, in the next couple of videos, and that's really uh, where most of the work uh, comes in. You can you can figure out uh, you can start your your uh, integration with with one of the uh, starting entities. We'll talk about uh, on uh, on the next video, and from there you will have a wizard. And you'll walk through the process uh, from end to end. So you can so even if you're not starting, uh, even if you are starting from scratch, you're really not. There's a lot of work that that you uh, will be able to leverage. Uh, in the integration center in order to, uh, to get done what you need to get done. If you have a simple interface, you can really crank them out in an hour or two, uh, get, them, get them up and running, and then have it sent off, and then you can validate it uh, you know, right away. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice tool. It, all you really need is to really have a good understanding of what Employee Central does. Um, and then we have, uh, the, uh, we have the key capabilities of the monitoring tools. The monitoring tools, are, of course, are, are, are useful. Um, they are not as quite as robust, but uh, they, they will definitely get the job done as far as like letting you know if something failed or not and then give you the, the log that you can go to. 
So that is really uh, the end of today's video, uh, or, or this first video, which is going to be uh, just talking about the overview. Uh, the next one is going to be talking about, the, uh, about getting started, um, and we're going to talk about uh, how to choose a starting entity, and then some, some other things about how you can get going with selecting fields and things like that. So hope you found this uh, video useful, and we will talk again on, on uh, video two.